Go to ten dollars, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, and it'll make you a millionaire with just by owning a thousand dollars of it. He, that guy, the same guy that fleece heisted and shisted you on Celsius, got lost all your money in BlockFi, and then didn't think he was doing enough and threw you into Terra Luna to just lose even more money that you didn't have that you took loans out for against your house, against your car, personal loans from a bank. Because that, that scumbag, that shyster, that fleecer and heister tried to swindle you and did swindle a lot of his audience with his non sense and his buffoonery and his uh paid promoter and show that he was and now he's trying to go the xrp and the xrp and the court case that everyone thinks is going to be the catalyst that's going to push up and explode xrp and like bit boy crypto i'm bit boy crypto i've not only had you buy celsius three i've not only had you buy the celsius token the bnb token the block token uh uh, what other moon coin did he have you guys going in the Terra Luna collapse but now BitBoy Crypto was trying to f put out the false uh, prophecy that he good Saturday the 29th of April of 2023 on a cloudy but not rainy seasonably mild 65 degrees at 5 35 p.m eastern standard time in the greater sterling heights metropolitan area in the great state of michigan this is vincenzo's gold crypto investing where you like subscribe and share for a one-of-a-kind company made computer software trading probability based trading alert and tactical analysis and company philosophy as we're your most trusted source for blockchain technology and cryptocurrency breaking news and coin updates here on YouTube and in the cryptocurrency sphere, right? And hit that bell notification and our road to 10,000 subscribers and get the valuable information and education that you need in an unbiased form straight to facts and technical analysis and breaking news non-paid non-paid promoter or a fleecer and we call out the fleecers like bit boy crypto right but when we're looking at today's technical analysis we're still in the similar area if we're looking at the macro time frame and the daily time frame we do know if we look at the way zoomed out machine right here we can see what's been going on very clearly over the last several years, which was a classic pump and dump, right? And we've went over the pump and dumps quite substantially over the over time. All right, let's get those out of there. Over time, and you can see this pump and dump that is in the deflating stage right now. That's the fleecer tool. We need the perching tool, right? Industry exclusive, made famous by old Vincenzo. You can see the build up when crypto started or the Bitcoin came online in 2000 and oh, it doesn't even go back far enough. This only goes back to 2015 on this chart. But you can see the price was building slowly but steadily and then at its first blow off top, then the big bear market and then it's mountain double top. And you see this when you get peak one, 50% crash at the start of the bear market, bear market rally which briefly touched the new all-time high by a few dollars for a few minutes and then reversed to the mean. You got that mountain double top or M topping reversal pattern. That's a very bearish macro formation. And it told you this thing was gonna deflate and deflate big. And it came down almost 90% to its $15,000. So it swung from nearly $68,000 all the way down to just above 15,500 uh, about a year and a quarter later at a bear market, current bear market low. And the volume continues to decline now after the second bit of volume here but most of this was sell volume right on this most recent peak it was all selling then we have this bear market rally and if we zoom in now understanding where we came out from the micro the macro time frame as we zoom into the micro time frame you can see we're in another rising channel right this one's not quite a bear flag because a bear flag starts sort of like you have back here right where you get the initial big flush so you got like a flag pull and then you trade up it, big flush, trade up it, big flush, trade up it. And then this one just kind of traded sideways and then dumped. And now we're just in a rounding consolidation 
which to me seems like a bear market rally. Everyone got over bearish down here. Finally, some of the longs got liquidated out. Some of the shorts, more importantly, started to cover. And if there's one thing you know about technical analysis, whether you're looking at the Bitcoin price, a commodity price, gold, silver, oil, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, or any of these other stocks, when you get a shorts uh, cover, the shorts are profiting. The shorts are taking massive profits if they were shorting this whole thing. And now they were starting to take profits down here. And when you sell a short, it's actually buying it. Because when you short it up here, you're actually selling uh, the share into the open market to buy it back at a later date. And then if you trade it correctly and you sell uh, the option, the commodity, or the stock at 67000 and you're selling it short, meaning you're going to buy it back later. If you now buy it back at $15,500, the difference between $15,500 and $68,000, that spread, and otherwise as it's called, the, the person that shorted it, that's buying it back into the open market, here gets to keep the spread, whether it be $60,000, or if you buy it for ten, short it at ten. And then you buy it back and cover your short at five, you clear the $5 spread in between there for profit, right? And that's what happens. So all the shorts become buys temporarily while they're covering and taking profit. So the price can usually run up. And that's usually from uneducated retail traders that don't understand in a bear market. When you get a bear market rally, oftentimes in individual stocks, it'll be short covering. And I believe that's part of, if not most of what's happening here, a lot of short covering. And then some retail traders are starting to pile in at the end, misreading and misreading a signal that's being given to by the market because they really don't have the education or the knowledge of what's going on. And then they buy the bear market rally, usually towards the end of it, after it shows signs of life that any and everybody can see and then the price fizzles out and eventually rolls over on itself after all the shorts cover and that temporary buying that misleading buying that was just covering is done and then the momentum dies out because it was only momentum based off of people trying to get out of positions and profit right so that's what's going on and that's a secret in technical analysis that you can only get here for free at the most informational fact-based technical analysis super simple and easy trading service uh, with my own personal opinions. I am not a financial advisor, nor should you take any of this as financial advice. You should only take it for what it is, my own personal opinion, information and education and facts and uh, news that is coming out in the crypto sphere. But right now, if I'm looking at the Bitcoin price, my areas and my levels are obviously the main key level here is you can't even see that down there is right here at the 29,000 and change. Can you skip through this and try to make a brief run up to 39,000? Or you're gonna get rejected where you're at here at the 29,000 and end up coming for a major double bottom, which is a technical target out of a rising channel where you have uptrending underneath support and uptrending overhead resistance where the entry is about the same width as where the exit would be. But a technical target, if you break out of that, is all the way down here at the bottom of the channel, which is right in this blue trading range. And that's what we're going to be watching out for. The Ethereum price is the same thing. It continues to get rejected off that major overhead resistance, trading back into this VP volume indicator fixed profile range of the coin. And as long as it's from above it, it's going to try to act as uh, support. But I feel like this is going to eventually dump and trade below it after this miraculous fantastic bear market rally i think eventually we're going to start to trade down over time and we're going to retest some of these lows on uh, the next several months but the key levels here is the 1682 the 200 day moving average in the daily time frame and at the same level as the bottom part of that red trading zone the vp volume indicator if you break that you come down here to 1200 really quick if you can hold these areas you can try to get back above the 19,002 and 15 cents or nineteen hundred dollars, and maybe make another run up here for a double, a double, a local double top. Those are the levels to watch out for. Nineteen thousand to try to stay bullish, and if you break below the sixteen thousand eighty-two or sixteen hundred eighty-two dollars, you get very, very bearish. If you get below there and the two hundred day moving average, and then if we fly over into a little XRP love, gotta talk about the XRP. Everybody loves the XRP and the XRP and the court case that everyone thinks is gonna be the catalyst that's gonna push up and explode XRP and like BitBoy Crypto. I'm BitBoy Crypto. I've not only had you buy Celsius three. I've not only had you buy the Celsius token. 
the BNB token, the BlockFi token, uh, uh, what other moon coin did he have, you guys, going in the Terra Luna collapse? But now BitBoy Crypto was trying to f put out the false uh, prophecy that he knows that XRP is going to a thousand X in the next bull market. It's going to go to ten dollars, a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, and it'll make you a millionaire with just by owning a thousand dollars of it. He, that guy, the same guy that fleeced, heisted, and shisted you on Celsius, got lost all your money in BlockFi, and then didn't think he was doing enough and threw you into Terra Luna to just lose even more money that you didn't have that you took loans out for against your house, against your car, personal loans from a bank. Because that, that scumbag, that shyster, that fleecer and heister tried to swindle you and did swindle a lot of his audience with his nonsense and his buffoonery and his uh, paid promoter and show that he was. And now he's trying to go out there and now he's trying to attack FTX, call people out saying he's got this on everybody else when he's just trying to cover his own ass as he's in a massive lawsuit because he's nothing more than a big lummox, a big scumbag, a big charlatan, a big fleecer and a heister and nothing better than a modern day snake oil Nigerian scammer that fleeced his audience uh, out of their hard earned fucking money with manipulation, uh, with uh, trickery and with shysterism, as I've termed it, shysterism, and it's a hundred percent shyster. Anything that guy does, do the opposite. He's got the Jim Cramer effect. He's just a he's just a paid character up there now, being a, a, a essentially the circus to fleece you out of your fucking money. And the truth about XRP, the truth that he's not telling you, and the truth that everybody's hiding from everybody out here is the the XRP case isn't a worldwide case. It only involves things that are going on within the United States of America. It has nothing to do with suppressing the price more than a minute amount because the rest of the world, it does not, they don't give a flying two fucks what the, FT, what the FCC in the United States is doing with a lawsuit that has no bearing on Brazil, that has no bearing on China, Japan, Korea, Australia, and wherever else the mass populations are. That This case here in the United States doesn't do anything to suppress the XRP price. The XRP price gets suppressed by bear markets and by the natural flow of the coin that releases hundreds of millions of coins a month until it gets to its max supply that is somewhere of around I forget what it was a hundred billion coins or something crazy like that and right now they only have about 60% of that flowed out so they naturally dilute itself and it just happens to coincide now with the bear market it has nothing to little to nothing to do with the FCC lawsuit in an isolated country that is the United States of America right so the truth is, remains the same. The bear market continues, but the bear market rally has come up against major overhead resistance. And that major overhead resistance is at 51 to 53 cents with a max potential at 68 cents. But right now we're holding on the 200 day moving average and in the daily time frame, what you need to do in XRP is to hold the 200 day moving average and then try to rebounce up and rebrand for another leg up. Or you're going to slip this, come back down to that 37 cents. Like, subscribe, and share. Peace and love to the beautiful audience.